If you are a student with a digital note-taking device such as an iPad or some other form of tablet, do you ever wonder what the best note-taking app is, especially with the numerous note-taking apps available on app stores? If so, this video is for you. To start, some apps you may have previously heard of include GoodNotes, which costs $9.99 per year on all platforms, or a one-time payment of $29.99 only on Apple. Another app that's pretty common is Notability, which costs $2.99 per month on Apple, or a yearly payment of $14.99. Now, the app I'm reviewing today in this episode, which is not sponsored by the way, is called NoteShelf, and it only costs $9.99 for the premium subscription, which is a one-time payment, already a lot better than the other two apps. But let's see how it compares to the other two apps and other aspects. In this video, I will review the pros and cons of NoteShelf 3. Let's begin with paper templates. For good notes and notability, there are several websites such as Etsy that sell digital paper templates. While this is a great way to support small businesses, if it is not in your budget after already paying, say, $30 on good notes, then NoteShelf 3 is a great choice. I really like that it also came with so many scheduling templates to help keep your life organized. As you can see, they also have different templates organized by different subtypes such as education and productivity to help you find the perfect template for you. NoteShelf 3 truly has an insane amount of templates. Now, let's create a quick note and test the note taking experience. To change the paper template of your quick note, click on the three dots in the upper right corner and click paper template. Here you'll find several options for different colors and paper types such as plain, checked, or even legal paper. You can change the size of your paper to A4 if you're planning on printing your notes and you can even change the line spacing of your paper. Now just like good notes and notability, NoteShelf 3 has a pen, highlighter, eraser, and lasso tool. However, one thing that I did not like in this app is that you cannot choose the colors you'll permanently find on the left hand side. You can only change one color, which is a circle with the rainbow in it. However, However, you can select your pen sizes, which is nice. If you click on the pen after already selecting it, you'll see the option to turn on hold to convert to shape. This is supposed to help you make perfect shapes, but I noticed that it did not work for shapes such as stars. And it also didn't work when I tried to draw a rectangle the first time, but it worked the second time. You can also select from different pen options, including ballpoint, fountain, felt, and a pencil. The eraser is pretty similar to other apps as it lets you choose your own size, but it also has an auto feature, which I haven't seen in other apps. It also allows you to erase pencil only, erase highlighter only, erase entire stroke, and auto select previous tool. Moving on to the tool shape, it's pretty similar to the other apps. You can draw perfect arrows and other shapes, rotate them, so nothing too unique similar to the next tool, which is the text box tool. Next, another simple tool, the lasso tool, is also very similar to the other apps, but it's still pretty useful because you can take screenshots and choose to select only handwriting, text boxes, photos, or shapes. Another thing that I noticed that I didn't like is that in GoodNotes, when you pull up, it adds a new page, but in this app, it doesn't do that, which is less efficient. Moving on to what I think is the coolest part of NoteShelf is NoteShelf AI. I know GoodNotes 6 has AI, but even previous users of GoodNotes 5 must pay the $30 to upgrade, so if you're just thinking of upgrading for the AI, consider getting NoteShelf 3 instead. With NoteShelf AI, you can type in any topic and it'll give you at least one paragraph so you can learn that topic better. It's also able to summarize, explain, and translate concepts, which I think is really interesting. Another great thing about this app is that you can use shortcuts. So you can use two fingers and double tap to undo and three fingers and single tap to redo. Going to the plus symbol, it's in the upper right corner, there are three tabs with different functionalities. The first tab has to do with page background, the second tab has to do with images, and the third tab has to do with anything online. In the first tab, you'll see options to add a new page, choose template, and set the page background to either a photo in your album, a scan, a camera photo that you take right now, or an import from your documents. Again, this means you'll have to click the plus symbol every time you want to add a new page. Jumping around a little bit here and going back to the three dots in the upper right corner to show you that this also has a presentation tool where you have a laser pointer, just like in the other two apps. There's of course the option to share your notes, but also an option to go to page, which I think is a little useless because we don't always know which exact page we need to go to, which is why I think the four boxes in the upper left corner is more useful. Here you can see all the pages, bookmark them, and also add pages. And in the three dots, you have the zoom box, which is similar to in GoodNotes and is super useful because it moves along as you write. The zoom box also has its own settings where you can adjust where the buttons are, line spacing, and margin spacing based on your preferences. Another quick shortcut is using four fingers and tapping once to enter focus mode, just leaving the paper and pen behind. Exit focus mode by doing the same. If you ever forget these shortcuts, you can find them under the three dots. You can click more settings to add a password to your notes, which is quite unique compared to the other apps and can also be very useful. You can also unlock the notes using Face ID. In addition to that, you can change the scrolling direction from vertical to horizontal, and you can click on Stylus to enable Apple Pencil and pressure sensitivity. If you have the second generation Apple Pencil, then you can also change the double tap setting. You can click on Customize Toolbar to change the order or add new tools to the top bar. 
I was excited to see that I could add a microphone to my toolbar to record while taking notes. In both GoodNotes and Notability, when you record something while writing and play back that recording, it'll highlight what you wrote during that part of the recording. However, I was disappointed to see that that is not the case in NoteShelf. Another thing that I really like about this app that it comes with so many stickers and emojis that you can add to your notes. You may not want to add them to your notes, but it may motivate you to take more notes and it may also motivate you to keep up with something like a bullet journal. As you can see, there are so many categories for the stickers and within those categories, there's a bunch of stickers. Now the little circle between the plus and the three dots is also just a focus mode button, so you can turn it on and off easily. Another feature which is very similar to other apps mentioned is NoteShelf 3's ability to convert handwriting into text. All you need to do is select the lasso tool, select the text you want to convert, then click the little greater than sign and click convert to text. You can even adjust the font size or leave it based on how big your handwriting was. Similar to GoodNotes, NoteShelf 3 does not highlight in a straight line unless you enable it. To enable this, just click on the highlighter icon once to select it and then click on it again. Then you can toggle on hold to convert to shape or draw in straight line or both. If you want to play around with the highlighter colors and figure out which one makes your handwriting pop the most on your chosen paper template and paper color, then you can use the lasso tool. If you use the lasso tool and select the handwriting and the highlighter, it will change the color of both the handwriting and the highlighter. If you want to undo this, you can either use a trick to undo it with two fingers, or you can select only handwriting in the lasso tool and convert your handwriting back to black. Here are some notes I took using NoteShelf 3. I think this app is similar to Notability in terms of organization and I actually like that better because you can see all the different folders you have on the left hand side. You can create different folders for each subject and drag and drop your notebooks into those folders. If you plan on note taking on an iPad, I would definitely recommend this app. I hope you found this video helpful. If you did, please like this video and subscribe to my channel. Bye!